This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. So Fallout 4 introduced a brand new settlement and crafting system to the franchise. On the one hand, while I do like to have the ability to customize my weapons and armor, I'm personally not as big of a fan of actually building settlements. Um, I don't think it's all bad as I do like some of the settlement building objects like the decontamination arch to clear radiation or the firework mortar which allows you to change the weather. That said, I do think that the settlement system still has some big or major problems with it. While I think a lot of things can be fixed some can't and I hope that if there are any developers out there watching this particular video that they will consider some of my suggestions in future entries of the Fallout franchise without further ado these will be the five big problems with Fallout 4's settlement building system number five tutorials I remember back when I first picked up Fallout 4 that certain things about the settlement building system were unclear. Now, while Sturge's tutorial on like some of the basics like building turrets for defense or planting crops for food or uh, creating like spigots for water and then maybe adding beds for your settlers to sleep. And while that was explained pretty well, uh, there isn't really a great explanation of some of the other settlement mechanics. And this is sort of a embarrassing for me to mention, but I didn't realize there was a way or a function to send various settlers from one settlement to the other. And I'm not talking about companions here, which I did understand that because both systems are fairly similar. Um, it also took me about a week or two after launch to figure out with the right perks that you could establish supply lines between one settlement and the next. And there's also little to no explanation of what like certain objects do, like the scavenging stations, uh, which are supposed to help you gather construction resources and junk for your settlements so you don't have to be constantly going out and bringing um, resources from one workshop to another and stuff like that. While I don't think some of this can be fixed until the next Fallout game, I do wish there was some better explanations on how many of the things for the settlement building system worked. Number four, useless building objects. Now, maybe it's because I'm not that creative, but traps in general just seem to be useless to me. Um, while I do think that some of them are cool in concept, for example, there are like the spike traps where you can have people walk over them and they like deploy spikes, or something like the flamethrower trap is kind of cool, or even the Tesla arcs. Uh, the problem is, is that all of these are less effective than having turrets for defending settlements because turrets can fire from a range where the enemies have to walk directly near these traps in order for them to work. And really the same thing goes for guard posts as well. Uh, if you can build automated turrets, why wouldn't you just use those instead? But maybe the idea is that you don't have the resources to build turrets, but instead you've got enough steel and wood and then maybe like a settler or two to where you could just build a guard post. But even then, a settler provides only two defense when assigned, while a turret provides five to eight, depending on the turret. And turrets don't have to sleep and they are always active. Um, and while I can't suggest on how to fix traps, it seems like equipping settlers and sending them to a guard post would provide better defense than having a guy without armor using a pipe pistol assigned to guard duty. If I've got a settler decked out in like combat armor and then he's got like a laser rifle, shouldn't he be more effective at defending my settlement than just some guy with a pipe pistol? At least I think so. On this end, why even equip your settlers and assign them to guard duty when you can build turrets that are two to four times more effective and provide like two to four times the defense rating? It's sort of silly to me. Number three, various glitches. Now, settlers can randomly get stuck on objects. And the big one that I can think of that everyone's probably going to know is that sometimes you'll find a bunch of settlers in the garden that's behind the yellow house in Sanctuary. And the yellow house I'm talking about is the one 
where your power armor uh, crafting station is at the very beginning of Fallout 4. Another thing is that sometimes when you assign settlers to a job, they will not go and do that job. And this is particularly frustrating when trying to assign certain settlers as vendors uh, to basically sell things to you in your settlements. Another thing is that the Pip-Boy provides inaccurate data on your settlements. So for example, a settlement will say that they're low on food or defense or something on your Pip-Boy, but then when you actually go and fast travel there and then you open up the workshop, you'll only discover that there's nothing actually wrong with the settlement wasting your time. Not only that, but the Pip-Boy display glitches still happen on all platforms eight months after Fallout 4 released. And according to the Fallout Wiki, because I didn't know this, this is a, quote, a fundamental limitation of the simulation engine, so there are no methods to prevent this from occurring, end quotes. They do, however, go on to mention that you can fix these via console commands, which you're only going to be able to do that on PC or thankfully by going to the settlement in question and accessing the workshop manually. Honestly, guys, I hope a lot of these glitches get fixed. But speaking of glitches, we're going to go on here to the next annoying thing and problem that I have with Fallout 4's building system. Number two, floating pieces. One of the most frustrating things with Fallout 4 settlement system, crafting system, are floating building pieces. Uh, you place some settlement building objects on the ground and it'll look decent from one angle, but when you take a moment to look at it from a different angle, you'll notice that the piece is floating above the ground. And this is especially annoying when you're trying to place things like tables and chairs on uneven surfaces. You have to build most even surfaces by creating floating to place these objects otherwise they look hideous and while I'm pretty sure that you can fix this with PC mods I wish Bethesda had addressed these quickly in some of the first patches or so for Fallout 4 and really simple things like adding a raise or sink feature would make all objects look way better on uneven surfaces in fact the concrete pieces from the Wasteland Workshop DLC allow you to do something like this so why can't can't any of the other settlement objects do this as well. Number one, settlement building emphasis and mandatory requirements for settlement building. Now, I will admit, maybe this is a little unfair, but to disclose my bias somewhat, I'm not a huge fan of the mandatory nature of the settlement building system. And while I do like useful objects, like I mentioned earlier, like the decontamination arch, uh, some of the manufacturing pieces that got added with the contraptions DLC, I wish that you weren't forced to go through the building system. And really during the first two hours of the game, Codsworth basically tells you to go help Preston Garvey and basically ends up with you engaging in the settlement building system. And that's not even limited to just like optional things. I mean, to get into the Institute, you have to build a teleporter, which requires the settlement building system. In Far Harbor, you have to play tower defense with Dima's memories, which again requires the settlement building system. I'm sorry if that spoiled something for you guys. I didn't mean to do that. Hopefully I didn't give too much away. Anyway, in future fallouts, if you are a developer and you are somehow watching this video, please make this system more optional or give the players ways to progress throughout the story without using the settlement building system. Something I didn't mention is that at the very beginning of the game, if you do know what you're doing, you can go straight to Diamond City and bypass Preston Garvey entirely. However, you do get to a point where you have to ultimately use the settlement crafting system. And I kind of wish that you didn't have to do that. Anyway, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like and, you know, let me know what you think of the settlement building system, crafting system, whatever we're going to call it. Uh, I sort of like it, but I sort of don't. I think I might like it more if some of the glitches were dealt with. Um, hopefully they will get to that. We'll ultimately see. But anyway, guys, again, take care and I'll see you all next time.